Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Xfinity Series first practice is set to start in about five minutes from the four-mile road course in the heart of Wisconsin. Dave Burns here with you, along with Dale Jarrett eventually. And we say eventually because when practice is scheduled to roll in five minutes, NASCAR believes that cars may go out, although they're not sure. They've been given the option. You can see it's raining, so the track is wet. And NASCAR will give teams the option. The rain appears to be passing. There is another practice later this afternoon at 3.30 Eastern, which they may save everything for. And then the forecast tomorrow is a bit clearer in terms of weather. So when the cars roll, if they roll for this first practice, we will be back with you. If not, we'll make sure to see you at 3.30 Eastern here on the NBC Sports app.
everyone. Welcome to Xfinity Series Practice from Road America, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, where the series is under the weather. Ha! It is raining in Elkhart Lake. And so NASCAR has opened the session for practice, but they've given the drivers and teams the option as to whether or not they want to go out and run a lap on the rain tires, the dry tires, or not at all. Now, the rookies who have never been here before, uh, NASCAR will require them to get one lap under their belts before they go to qualifying and racing tomorrow, but that could also happen later this afternoon when we are back with you on the app for final practice at 3.30 Eastern. You can see in the flag stand right now, flag's not being displayed, but practice has officially begun, and teams will have the option, if and when cars roll for first practice, we'll be back with you here on the NBC Sports app. Second, the track is green for practice one of the NAS for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And this is by Bill Taker. So this is the session, time certain session, available for NASCAR Xfinity Series cars to take the track until 125 p.m. The first of two practice sessions today.
Well, maybe. Well, yeah, but yeah, but.
Welcome to Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. The four-mile road course, which is the next stop for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. First practice has been green for a while. There has not been much track activity. And that is due to a little weather pattern we've seen. Dave Burns with you, along with Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett. And down in the garage area, Landon Castle and Parker Kligerman today. So the weather that moved through was a quick shower. It drenched the track, and then it went away. And the only car to dare go out on the track, Dale, was <laughs> Tyler Reddick. And uh, it caused him a little bit of problems. Yeah. I, eventually. I, yeah, eventually. Uh, made a couple of laps that reduced rate of speed. And went down pit road a couple of times. Looked like maybe kind of checking out pit road. But uh, then got a little braver as he went along, mm -hmm. thinking that everything may be okay to attack a little bit more. But that wasn't the case, as we'll see right here. As he gets in a little too hot. Opts to not try to turn and make this, but goes into the sand trap. This is down in Canada corner, about three turns from the end. And he was able to roll it back out of there. There's Tyler Reddick and Parker standing by with him. Well, we were just watching that replay, guys, and actually he was saying that was the most helpless feeling in the world. What was? Uh, just doing something stupid on the lap that I'm literally coming in and parking it for this practice session. Um, sad part about it is I was just, you know, trying to just feel it out a little bit better in case this is what we have tomorrow, if, if it ever did come in, into play, but um, just got a little bit of wheel hop hitting the brakes, and as soon as I tried to go down to the next gear, it went into neutral and didn't catch third, so I just, like, at that point, just trying to just, hoping that when I hit the, the sand pit, it wouldn't do any too, too bad of damage, but uh, fortunately, it, it blew the splitter up pretty bad, so um, I'm sure we can bend it back. It's just more work that I'm sure my guys didn't want to do today on a day that Looked like it wasn't going to be any work for him at all. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about wet weather driving. What did you learn out there? Did you start to feel where the grip is? I know from my own experience that you obviously get offline, and then you start searching for the grip. Did you find it, or did you just feel like a little helpless at times? Uh, there, was, there was grip in a lot of um, places I didn't expect. You know, down in Canada Corner Exit is really difficult to get the power down. Um, it's a little difficult to get the power down in turn one. Um, some of the places where the exit, you run off really wide. But... Um, a lot of that, I was just kind of feeling around trying to find the more and more grip as I was going just to just, you know, see if the, if we are going to rain, race in the rain at you know, some point here that I'd have a little bit of idea what it's going to be. And uh, just got a little too aggressive with the braking. I, I feel like I didn't really charge the corner hard, but uh, as soon as it as soon as we'll hop, you, you start to lose a, a serious amount of time to brake and uh, just got worse and worse and ran to a sand trap, I guess. And the last thing I'll ask you about in your practice was your experience on pit lane. Did it all go well there? I saw you miss the entrance to coming into garage, though. Well, they had it, they had it coned off, so I didn't know where to come in. So I just came in the entrance. I didn't. I've been I've been running the T. Just go wherever you want. I've been running the TA2 car this yesterday and today, and we we park all the way down towards uh, the final corner there in 14. So I didn't really know where to go. I've never ran here before. Well, this this weekend. So unfortunately, the Trans Am the Trans Am deal is going a lot better for us than the Xfinity side. But this isn't too bad. It could have been a lot worse than this, I think. No doubt. And, guys, that's the thing here. Not only you have to figure out where the racetrack goes, but also garage. <laughs> Can be a little tricky. Yep. Not sure if uh, it's the most tricky in NASCAR, but <laughs> you do need to find your entry points everywhere here, don't you? Yes, you do. Yeah. Speaking of finding your way around, this is Connor Daly driving for Roush Fenway Racing this weekend in the number six. Something he dearly wanted to try, Dale, and with his experience in open wheel on road courses, certainly a proper place to do it. Yeah, we'll see how that translates into driving a stock car. I'm sure he's been told by many that they don't stop very well, the tires aren't very wide, so they corner a lot differently, but yeah, that, that's great uh, to be able to, you know, kind of expand his driving career some, and I know that he would rather it be dry out here and go get that opportunity to really see what these cars are about. Mm -hmm. So two drivers on track so far in first practice with 12 minutes remaining there. One Hall of Fame driver in the booth with me. Two drivers down in the garage area. We heard from Parker Kligerman. Landon Castle is standing by as well. What's up, Landon? <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I'm just checking out practice, getting used to being a pit reporter because this is my first time on the job. And with a wet racetrack, only two takers so far. 
I talked to Connor Daly before uh, uh, before practice started, and he was kind of chomping at the bit to get out on the wet race track, and he was surprised uh, to give it a shot. But you know, this you got to utilize your time just a little bit here, and you can see him practicing pit road speed. I think is a good use of their time. We saw Tyler Reddick practicing his some of his launches out of the pit box uh, in a wet condition, which I think is a good use of his time. And really, the next step is to see when the race cars get on the racetrack. Uh, for the start of second practice, how long it takes to get this track dry so they can actually start working under dry conditions. Hey, Lynn, and I know you do a bit of driver coaching yourself. Were you able to give Connor a little input before he jumped into a 3,500-pound stock car? I didn't mess with that here at all. I think these guys <laughs> know this track pretty well. They know the technique. Uh, I probably should actually try to steal some tips from him myself. Ah, very good. Hey, that works both ways, right? Yeah, he was excited. He actually... Um, um, he had uh, Billy Johnson standing there with him, which is kind of the Ford driver coach. Yep. Uh, really helps out a lot of the young Ford drivers, someone that I've worked with. Uh, a lot of racing experience, a lot of road racing experience in that camp. Appreciate it, man. We'll get back to you in a little while. And uh, the name that Landon mentions, Billy Johnson, he has certainly helped a lot of the Roush Fenway drivers with their road course racing skills. Yeah. And a couple of them even credit Victory Lane visits to it. No doubt, yeah. Very experienced at it and, and really relates well to a driver that... When you have questions, uh, he can put it into simple terms, and, and he understands exactly what uh, what you're talking about. And and it, and again, it's been very helpful. I, I think it's a great idea that that Ford has him there, and and the, the things that he's been able to do uh, through the years with. It not only you know, this isn't just about giving that to rookies. That there are a lot of veteran drivers that uh, have learned a lot of things that you know as you go through and. Yeah, only doing it a couple of times a year. Uh, it's not something you put a lot of thought process into it until it's time for it to happen. And so Billy is able to, to help them in, in that regard. That's a story from Camp Ford and Roush Fenway at this point for Connor Daly. Only the second of two drivers to take the track here. Still waiting is a driver from Australia who's caught up with Parker. That's James Davison. The Indy 500. But here's the thing. We are now at a road course in a stock car. It's going to be your fourth time doing this, and we were just talking how excited you are. You want to get on track, but they're holding you back. Yeah, look, I think since the weather looks like it'll be dry this afternoon and tomorrow, hopefully, it's just not worth the risk. I think everyone's doing the same thing. Certainly would love to get out there. And... Uh, yeah, having a look at Connor Daly, have his first run in a stock car. <laughs> I remember my first run here exactly two years ago. Uh, you know, you never get to test. And so then in the rain, it'd be uh, it'd be interesting. What, what do you think's going to his mind right there? He'd be just thinking, man, the kink definitely ain't full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. They're not. As you would say, in IndyCar, they would be full throttle. Yeah. It's not even a corner. Yeah. I mean, they're getting around here like 30 seconds a lap quicker, so... No, really excited to be back with Joe Gibbs Racing. Obviously, a fantastic opportunity to drive uh, Cole Trickle's car again, the Superflow 18. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got uh, Jonathan Birds on board, Lake Forest Hearing again. And, uh, yeah, Jonathan Birds was uh, on board with me at the Indy 500. So, yeah, fantastic to have them in uh, stock car racing. And what is the Days of Thunder obsession, I guess? You had the Mel Yellow car last year. You got this one, the Superflow this year. What's the obsession with Days of Thunder? Look, I think when you're a kid growing up on the other side of the world and you watch those inspiring American dream movies like uh, Top Gun and Days of Thunder, it, it sticks with you. And, and then to actually end up here 10,000 miles away from where I was born and raised, actually racing NASCAR, um, not having uh, sponsors that uh, require a specific livery, I, it, was, it was a bit of fun, you know, so... Yeah, I just uh, inspired uh, by the movie and and, um, and a bit of fun. No doubt. This does one of the best-looking cars here in the garage right now, Landon. Yeah, I've got Austin Sindrick driving for Penske in the 22 car. You've had uh, multiple rides this season. Uh, what has it been like jumping between three different cars? Yeah, it's been awesome. It's been a cool experience, obviously, to be able to race for Team Penske as well as Rouse Fenway Racing and be able to have the experience of all of those people around me and really to be able to push me and excel myself and uh obviously we're here this weekend and got menards on the car we're in menards country so hopefully we can uh, have a great result here this weekend i love this racetrack come back here after running last year so i think we got some confidence and uh hopefully 
pretty solid run. Yeah, I mean, you run really well on road courses. I, I think we can say that you could be one of the favorites to win. But what did you learn in Mid-Ohio um, last weekend that could help you uh, moving forward here at Road America? Tires matter. Uh, I think tires matter here a lot more than somewhere like Mid-Ohio. Um, so I think that's definitely in the strategy. Uh, obviously, a super long lap around here. So a lot of, a lot of places lose and gain time. Uh, so I, I think that's all in the strategy as, as well as weather. I think every time I've come up here, it's had some threat of rain. And when you got a four-mile track, it could be raining on the back and completely dry over here. So it really puts a bind on some of the crew chiefs and as well as fuel strategy because, you know, it's a lot easier to run out of fuel at a place like this. So uh, definitely some complications when you come to a track like this, but it's one of the greatest places in the country, great fan base, and I'll always love coming here. Yeah, the tire strategy, that's a great point. I've heard it. It's been a uh, recurring theme from some of the crew chiefs that I've talked to, Dave. Uh, that it adds another variable to the race strategy of the weekend. For sure, Landon. And he mentioned uh, how big this place is, Dale. 640 acres cover the grounds that the four-mile track is on. So he's right. It could be raining in one portion and dry in the other, and you've got to be ready. Absolutely. And, and you know, you've got to be ready for anything and everything. I think last year showed us that as much as anything. I mean, we've seen, you know, races start uh, dry, go to wet conditions, uh, end up to where... Drivers that were, and, and Brendan Gaughan was, was one of those that was still on the rain tires and uh, had another driver to make a pit stop and almost came from literally 20th spot in a couple of laps to, to get the job done. So, you know, you see anything and everything, and you have to be ready for that. You know, the number of pit stops that you might make. You know, is it two versus three? What's yep. going to work? Uh, how many spotters do you use around the track? I was just asking Elliot Sadler. Uh, uh, exactly how many he was going to use. He said he was going to utilize four spotters tomorrow. Uh, he said some people have uh, as many as five. And if you wonder how many pit stops the winning strategy was last year, it was three, one at the end of each stage break, and then one under green for Jeremy Clements. So we've seen Connor Daly taking laps around Road America. Why don't we take you for a lap using our track map? Dale, get us started. Oh, uh, it, where do we start with this whole thing? I mean, it's, as you said, it, it's just so big. So turn one, hard right-hander, but you have to carry a lot of speed. And then as you get out to turn three and down what is the longest straightaway, down to turn five, it's probably the most difficult part. We see a lot of action there. And then the rest of the, the track becomes very, very technical from that point on. From Once you get through turn five, uh, through turn six, everything, yeah, you've got another going down to Canada Corner that you carry a lot of speed to, but very technical. So it's a kind of a combination, if you will, uh, of what you see at Mid-Ohio and at Watkins Glen, uh, where Watkins Glen is more high-speed road course, uh, and then you get to Mid-Ohio, where it was a lot more technical, and, and this kind of combines both. So really test the driver's ability here. First practice winding down from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and just to catch up to speed with what's happened so far, uh, not a lot. Rains moved through just before practice was set to open. NASCAR gave teams the option as to whether they wanted to purchase a set of rain tires, get them mounted, pull them on the race car, and head out. You can see the sun is out now, glaring on the six car. Uh, very few takers. Tyler Reddick was the only one to start the session. He ended up in the sand trap in Canada Corner. Fortunately, he was able to back the car out with minor damage. And Connor Daly, the driver of the six, has been the only other driver to take to the track during this 50-minute opening session. For those of you who are going to be around later this afternoon, 3.30 on the NBC Sports app. We'll be back for final practice, but we'll ride this one out and see if anyone else takes to the track. Or if Connor Daly, he's going to get the end of the uh, wet here, DJ, it looks like. <laughs> Yes, it's not quite transitioned over to where you could put on the the slicks at this point in time, but you can still see a, a few puddles along the way. But hopefully by the time that next practice session rolls around, it'll be completely dry for these drivers and teams to get out and make some laps. There we are, 3.30, streaming on the NBC Sports app. But don't forget also, speaking of IndyCar drivers like Connor Daly, IndyCar qualifying from Gateway. That's at 5 Eastern. They've been battling a little rain out there. And by the way, they're not going to put on rain tires at Gateway. <laughs> k and practice was uh, canceled earlier today. And they're trying to advance that schedule best they can. But hopefully, 5 p.m. on NBCSN qualifying from Gateway. Hey, Parker. Oh, hi, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. I've uh, caught up with a friend of mine. And that, well, that's good to hear. I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, Ryan Trex. 
Your guy's car had the cover on, and it had it the entire time. You never even threatened to go out in the rain there. You just scared of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I uh, I got plenty of rain experience at uh, Watkins Glen, and I learned that I don't want to do it again. So uh, I'm a rookie, so I got to make a lap at some point. But as you can see, the sun's coming out, and uh, yeah, we just we didn't want to take a chance um, to turn up the car or anything. I don't think we're expecting rain tomorrow, so hopefully not anyway. So um, yeah. And you're wearing the helmet cam for us this weekend. Thank you very much. What are the fans going to see through that helmet cam? What are they going to notice about this four-mile road course? They're going to learn as I do because I've never been here. So I, <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. Um, I've watched a lot of a lot of footage and, and the race from last year and practice and all that stuff. And it's all about survival. I mean, I think they're just going to see a lot of action, you know. I mean, hopefully it's in my mirror when I look up. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff happens here. It's a big track, and, and the pitch strategy is insane. And, and tires matter so much that yeah i mean there's there's so much going on that they'll they'll see it all as i do and i think they'll be prepared to see a lot go on in the braking zones as we have down in turn five that huge braking zone there's a huge one down the can of corner we saw the nine car go off when he did some laps earlier i mean for when you scout watching tape how do you kind of relate that to getting in the car i mean there's only so much you can do right i mean there's there's braking points that you can you can look at the the signs or something on the side of the track that you know, one of these guys that are really good, like a Michael McDowell or a, or a Sam Hornish would use. Um, you know, those are the types of guys you watch, but then you go out there and you try to do it, and you're like, I don't know how, I don't know how they break this far. I don't, I just don't think physically. That's not possible. There, no, there's no way. There's no way. So I, usually whatever I watch with those guys, I back it up like 50 to 100 feet, and, uh, and then I'm safe. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, you don't know until you go out there. Um, there's eye racing and there's, there's simulators and all that you can do, but... You can't physically get the seat of your pants feel, especially wheel hop and uh, braking zones as, as you do in the real thing. So luckily the sun is finally out, so we'll get a chance to figure it out. And that is the good news, Landon. The sun has popped out. It's turning into a very nice day. Yeah, and this, I'm talking to a guy right here with three wins this season, an oval track guy who's sort of turned into a road course racing ace, but he's happy that he didn't have to make any laps in the wet. Tell me about that. Well, you know, I, I think Watkins Glen was one of the same scenario where we knew the practice was going to be wet, uh, but the race was forecasted to be dry. So for us today, um, you know, we feel like second practice is going to be in the dry. Make sure that we don't we don't take any unnecessary risks. This place is hard enough as it is in the dry, and you know, we were just talking about off camera the, the carousel is as hard as it's hard as you want to be um, even in the dry. So uh, when it's wet like this, it, it makes it very interesting. So, you know, for us, it's about damage control, making sure that uh, we keep our Brent Freshman Agriculture Camaro clean and looking as, as good as it does right now. And hopefully when it dries out for second practice, we'll have a good shot at, at really learning. What, what is it about the tires, uh, the, the, the wet tires that's different uh, than the slicks that, that have different advantages about driving the wet? Yeah, it's really interesting because the, the wet tires actually accelerate and break equally as good as, as our dry tires. At least it seems that way. Uh, but the, the center of the corner, you, you obviously have to be going a lot slower. The, the wet track conditions and then the, the tire configuration, the way that it is, it just doesn't turn very well. So you're kind of in that limbo. Like, you, you know you could go faster, but at what, at what cost? So for me, it was always uh, kind of learning how far you could drive into the corner, uh, how hard you could accelerate off, but then just give up the center and make sure that you, you made it to the other side because that was the most important piece. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, li I like hearing that technical talk. Another guy, Parker, you just loved hearing that technical talk about tires didn't you bud i did I, that was really exciting i love good technical talk but hey i've caught up with a guy who maybe we won't get as technical but we will talk a little bit about rain because i can remember mid ohio a couple weeks ago you were scheduled to drive the trans am car only if it rained because you want to be better in the rain well now you just had the opportunity to get out in the rain and you didn't take it why not uh we don't want to risk our car we've uh we don't want to put it in a bad spot and you know uh, have it tore up and have it, have us to do work that we don't really have to because it's not really supposed to rain tomorrow too much so uh, we're just not going to risk it. I think we have a pretty solid. We got we brought a solid car, Automation Mustang, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully, you get some dry time in the second practice. Yeah, and when we look at this four mile road course, what's the places that stick out to you? Is it turn five? Is it Cannon Corner? What do you really focus on here? Uh, turn five is pretty important because it's such hard braking, and uh, you can make some passes down there. I'd say. Uh, I mean, there's so many corners that you make passes on because it's all there's so many corners that are just all about braking. So it's uh, really, I think you just got to be good on the brakes and see what we can do from there. Is the mustache improving the speed? Is it coming in for Donington? Well, I'd say so. You know, uh, we'll see. It's what good. Happens. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't really stand out that much. It's grown in pretty thick, but it's you know as you can see. But 
it doesn't really stand out because it's blonde. Yeah, I think he could use some coloring or something, Dave, maybe, for that mustache. <laughs> I uh, like the way he uh, justified its existence there, DJ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also like the way that he was going to use somebody else's equipment to learn to drive <laughs> in the rain. That's a good idea. That's actually a very smart driver, Cole Custer. All right, folks, we will be back with you in just about an hour for final practice here from Road America. That's 3.30 Eastern on the NBC Sports app. And don't forget qualifying for the IndyCars from Gateway this afternoon at 5 p.m. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you then.